Welcome to 321 Photoshop. I'm Julianne Koss. Let's check out six ways to work with color. First, if I want to select a color, I'll tap the I key, which will give me the eyedropper, where I can choose my sample size as well as which layers I want to select from, and then click in the image to set my foreground color. If I Option click or Alt click on Windows, that will set my background color. Another way to select colors would be to use the foreground and background color picker. I'll click the foreground color picker, and I can display this in a variety of different ways. If the color I've selected is out of gamut, I can bring it into gamut by clicking on the swatch. If I want that color to be web safe, I can click this swatch, or I can choose to work with only web colors. Once I have a color selected, I can quickly add it to my swatches, and I can also view other kinds of color libraries. Finally, if I need the hex color, I can copy it from the bottom. All right, the third way to select color would be to use the color panel. You can make the color panel much larger, and I really like the color panel because it's persistent. I don't have to keep going over and getting it like I would the foreground or background color picker. In addition, I can choose to display this using a variety of options, including HSB sliders. HSB makes it easy for me to select the hue, dial in the saturation, as well as the brightness value. I can use the flyout menu to copy not only the hex code, but also copy the color as HTML if I need to. The fourth way would be to use the heads up display or the HUD color picker. It's an odd shortcut, but it's Control Option Command on Mac and then click. On Windows, it's Shift Alt Right Click. When I click in the image area, I get two areas. On the left, I can select the saturation and the brightness, and on the right, I can select the hue. But when you're selecting colors, you'll quickly discover that you'll need to jump from one portion of the heads up display to the other. To do so, continue to hold the mouse down while you release the shortcut keys and then press the spacebar. The spacebar is going to freeze the selection of color and it allows you to jump from one strip or one side to the other. So here I'll hold the spacebar, that freezes the saturation and brightness. I'll move over, release the spacebar to dial in the hue. You can also choose a color from the swatches panel. At the top, we have our recently used swatches. And below that, we have the default set of swatches, but we can always load more using the flyout menu. In fact, I can use the load swatches option to navigate to a CSS, HTML, or SVG document. And if those documents have colors in them, they will be added to my swatches panel. If I want to add a color to my swatches panel from the image, I'll select it with the eyedropper tool and then click in this gray area to add it. If I don't want that swatch, I can hold down the Option or the Alt key and click on it to delete it. Finally, I can save and select colors from the Libraries panel. I'll choose this light yellow, click on the plus icon, and then add my foreground color. The content that's stored in a library is automatically synchronized between multiple installs of Photoshop using the same Adobe ID. So for example, my work and my home computer. And libraries are also shared with other Creative Cloud apps like Illustrator, so I could access these colors there. And finally, libraries can be shared by using the flyout menu and selecting collaborate or shared link with other people. That's it for now. Talk to you soon.